Hey y'all, prayer having a blessed day. It's so good to see you. This past week was the last week of school for the 2018-19 school year. And for some people on the last day of school, some students were eager to get on the bus and ride out of the campus and be done for a while. Others were in tears saying goodbye to their friends. For teachers, it was also the same story because some teachers were ready to run to the parking lot and get in their car and drive on out of the driveway. For others, it was somewhat bittersweet. For some of us, we're changing classrooms, changing subject, subject areas, and changing schools even for some people. So it's a time of change. For others, they're retiring. So their long career as a teacher has come to an end. I'm sure it's really bittersweet. My dad was one of those teachers who's retiring. So he's been in the field of education for 35 years, and I'm so proud of him. He's such an excellent teacher, and I've had the opportunity to be in a statistics class years ago in college, and I know what a great teacher he is firsthand. And, but I'm sure it's kind of strange for him to walk out of his classroom and he's been in public education for 29 years and what a change it is. But I'm so excited to see what God does in his life and his ministry and how God uses him for his glory because I know great things are in store in this new chapter. But still, when we come to a time of change, it's somewhat strange, isn't it? It's bittersweet, it's sad, it's joyous, it's all different emotions rolled into one. And last weekend we attended graduation and to see those students out on the field accepting their diplomas and thinking about where they're going to be this time next year. For many of them, they'll be in the military. Others will be in college. Others will be on the workforce. But none of them will be going to school as they have for maybe 12 or more years. And so times are changing and things in our lives change every day, don't they? Not just when we're graduating or retiring, but they change every single day of our lives because things come up that we don't expect. Our cars break down. Our homes need repairs. Um, sometimes our job changes. We get promoted or demoted. Maybe we move to a different town because of someone else's job or location needs to be changed. But changes come all throughout our lives. Sometimes they're expected, sometimes they're wanted, and sometimes they're not wanted. Change can be good and change can be bad. And there's one thing that is true, though. No matter what changes we experience in life, God has a purpose for our lives. God has a purpose and a plan for us that exceeds anything we could ever begin to imagine. Because we might see ourselves where we're going to be in five or ten years, but we can't really see the big picture. We don't know where God's going to have us in five or ten years. Well, we don't even know where God's going to have us next week. We know where we might be next week, but we don't know for sure. Because God has a perfect plan for all of our lives. And I want to encourage you today and remind you that you have a purpose. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11, the Lord says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. The Lord himself has told us that he has a plan for us. He has a purpose for our lives. And he, has, he wants to give us hope. He wants to help us, not harm us. And God will always be there for us every moment of our lives. And in fact, God even knew us before we were even born. You might be sitting there thinking, well, God doesn't have a plan for me. He doesn't care about me. Oh, that's so wrong because God has an enormous plan for your life. God knew you in the womb. The Bible says in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. This is the Lord speaking. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. The Lord has told us that he has a plan for us. He's got a purpose for us. He knew us before we were even born. And it says here that before we were born, he set us apart. We've been set apart. We're made special. We're special in the eyes of God. And God loves us more than we could ever possibly imagine. And we have a purpose. God has a plan for our lives. And it's not a plan like we might make plans to go on a picnic or go to the river and go fishing or to go on vacation or go see our relatives and friends and family. But it's a plan that is for our entire lives, not just for this life on this earth, but for all eternity. That's a plan that God has for our lives. It exceeds anything we could ever begin to imagine. Because God thinks differently than us. God's thoughts are much different than our own. Even the psalmist David wrote that God's thoughts were profound. And truly, we could never begin to even understand God's thoughts. We could never begin to understand God's plan for our lives. If we knew our whole life's plan that God has laid out for us right this very moment, we'd probably just be overwhelmed and probably just sit down and want to just either cry or rejoice or maybe a little bit of both. But we could never begin to even take it all in because God's plans exceed our thought process. God's plans exceed anything we be could begin to even imagine. And God's plans exceed everything we could ever even begin 
to come up with on our own. That's why we need to put our trust in His plan for our lives. We need to know that God's plan is perfect. His ways are perfect. And we may not understand every moment of our lives because we're going to face trials. We're going to face tribulations. We're going to face difficulties. We're going to face things that are bittersweet and things we're not really sure how to take and how to cope with. But in the end, we're going to see when we look back on our life, when we put our trust in Him, that God has proven faithful every single time, that God has a perfect plan for our lives, and that He has a master plan for our life. I wrote a song years ago called, God Has a Master Plan. And how true that is, that God has a plan for us because it's a master plan designed by our Creator, designed by the Creator of all the heavens and the earth and the entire universe. That's the one who's got a plan for your life. If you just put your trust in Him and commit your life to Him today, and in the book of, of, of Ephesians, I'm sorry, Philippians, chapter 2, verse 13, it says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. God wants to work in your life if you just put your trust in him. Just commit your life to him. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, Do not be anxious, but through prayer and thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. We don't have to be anxious about the future. We don't have to worry about what tomorrow holds. We don't have to worry if we've just graduated, what we're going to be doing for a job or college or military or whatever the next step of our life might be. We don't have to worry about that. If we were retiring, we don't have to worry about how God is going to use us because we can guarantee that God has a plan for us. And if you're already retired, maybe you're trying to find God's purpose for your life and maybe you're not sure what God wants you to do. Or maybe you're a stay-at-home mom or dad. Or maybe you are in a job right now that you're not sure it's where you want God wants you to be for the rest of your life, for the rest of your career. Whatever it is you're facing, all these decisions that we need to make and all these things that concern us and worries and keep us up at night, we can put all that in the hands of God. The Bible says in 1 Peter, we can cast our cares on Him for He cares for us. God cares for you so very much more than you could ever begin to comprehend. You're the apple of His eye. You're so special in God's sight. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. It doesn't say that God loved the world a little bit. It says God so loved the world. And He loved the world so much that He gave His only Son, that whoever should believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's how much God loves you. He gave His only Son to die for you on a cross for the forgiveness of your sins. You see, God knew that we could not save ourselves. God knew that we were beyond saving on our own. Because the Bible says in Romans 3.23 that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You see, there's no one good enough to be saved. There's no one good enough for salvation. There's no one good enough to go to heaven on our own. But through the grace of God, we can receive this wonderful, priceless gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Jesus said himself, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way to receive salvation except through Jesus Christ alone. Through the shed blood that he shed on Calvary, that's how we can receive our sins washed away white as snow. Because Jesus' blood erases all sin. When we confess our sins and put our trust in him forevermore, we can receive this gift of eternal life that God has given to every man, woman, boy, and girl on this planet that just puts their trust in him. Call on Jesus Christ today. The Bible says to call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. There's no special ticket you have to have. You don't have to pay your way into heaven. You don't have to know somebody who knows somebody. All you have to know is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and believe that he died and rose again the third day, and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us because of the great love that he has for us. He's loved you since before you were born. He set you apart. He has a purpose for your life. He has a plan for your life. Seek his will. You could be sitting there thinking, well, I don't know how to find out his plan. How, how do I find out? Can I Google it? No, you can't Google it. But all you have to do is read the scriptures. Read God's word. Because God's word is a message to us. It's a guide map for life. It's a road map to the road of life that we need to be traveling on. If you're going, running away from Jesus Christ, turn around. If you're on the wrong road, turn around. If you're not traveling down the narrow of the road that leads to life everlasting, turn around and seek his face. Call out to Jesus Christ today and follow him forevermore. And follow him and seek his will for your life because he has a plan and a purpose for you. He wants to give you hope and a future. He wants to give you a life that's beyond amazing. 
He wants to give you a life that is not just on this earth, but a life that lasts for all eternity. Because if we put our trust in Jesus Christ, we can receive the gift of eternal life in heaven with him. And he I love to travel very much. I love to travel with my dad. We go all the time to different places and minister and sing and share the love of Jesus Christ. But there's no greater place than we could ever go than heaven. It's not like going to a city or state or some other country. Because heaven is God's house. Jesus said himself that God is preparing a place for us. It's his Father's house. And one day we will be there if we put our trust in him. So I encourage you today to seek God's will for your life. Live out the purpose he has for you. Go and tell someone about Jesus Christ and what he's done for you. Because there's no greater message we could ever share than the love of Jesus Christ our Lord. So go and tell someone. Go call somebody. Go see someone. But go and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with someone today. And tell them that there is a purpose for their life as well. That they have meaning. That there is hope beyond this life. That there's hope for all eternity. That we have an eternal hope through Jesus Christ our Lord. The one who loves us more than we could ever possibly imagine. And if you're sitting there still thinking, well, no, I'm not good enough. I just, I, that's not for me. It is for you. Jesus died for every single person on this earth. I talked to someone recently that said that their family told them that they just, they weren't good. They weren't really, they were just an accident and they weren't even meant to be. But that's not true. Whatever you've been told by their people, just erase all of that from your memory. Because if it's not positive, I can tell you that God loves you. In fact, the Bible tells us that God is love. He's not just someone who loves you, but he is love. He's the very meaning of love. And God loves you more than you could ever truly comprehend. So put your trust in him because you're not an accident. You weren't a mistake. You're precious in the eyes of God Almighty, our creator. And you have a purpose in this life and a purpose for the life beyond if you put your trust in Jesus Christ today. God bless you. Be encouraged. And remember that Jesus loves you more than you could ever possibly imagine. And he has a plan for your life. I invite you to go to cwrmusic.org. Again, that's cwrmusic.org for more Be Encouraged videos, for songs my dad and I have written. You can download the free and pre 3 files free of charge. And we pray these things will be a blessing to you and those you share them with. Have a great week ahead. Just remember that Jesus loves you and that he has a plan and a purpose for your life because you have a purpose.